Calvary greetings to everyone by the special grace and mercy of God. I pray that the good Lord will be with you and see you through this journey of life in Jesus' name. So we have considered a cry of distress and plea for God, part one, where we read Psalm chapter 69, verse 1 to 21. And in this part two, we are going to be covering Psalm chapter 69, verse 22 to 36. So we are covering verse 22 to 36 in this part two. In part one, we actually talked about the way David cried unto the Lord. We talked about his plight. We talked about the heaviness of his heart. We talked about the suffering, you know, even how he acknowledged his suffering, that he related his suffering on behalf of God. We also talked about the prayer of for his deliverance, prayer of deliverance that he, he, he did to the Lord. We talked about his acknowledgement of waiting on the Lord. You know, we talked about his petitions to God. We talked about his patience. So in part one, please, I would encourage you to really um, have time and um, listen to the part one of this message. So let's dive in to the part two. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you are omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. You are the God that changes not. We pray that as we look at the part two of this message, it will minister light and life unto us in Jesus' name. Bless us, Lord, from your word. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. And help us to be the doers of your word, not the preacher only, not the herald only, not the listener only. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, we are looking at the continuation of, of Psalm 69, like I said earlier. All right, in verse 22 to 28, 22 to 28, I read, Let their table now is talking about the enemies, you see, um, talking about the enemies. That's why it's very important for you to listening to the part one of this message david's right here in verse 22 is a continuation of his prayer of his plea for deliverance to god okay right here he's talking about his enemies in verse 22 he said let their table become a snare before them and that which should have been for their welfare let it become a trap let their eyes be darkened that they see not and make their leons continually to shake. Pour out thy indignation upon them and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. You see, in this um, Psalm 69, verse 22 to 28 that we just read, we can see that David prayed a prayer for judgment upon the enemies. You see, this session is classified as an imprecatory utterance of, the, of David. The calling forth of a curse of evil upon his enemies upon one's enemies 
The liberal critics of the Bible castigate this section. You know, they related it to Psalm chapter 35. You, and also Psalm 109 and Psalm 137, it, it is etc. as being unworthy of inspired literature. But the truth is, the claim is made of this implication as far below the lofty tone of the New Testament. The interpreters, they actually consider this part as a mistaken prayer and they declares that it represents the dangerous excess of the lottery. They utterly deny that allegation and urge the careful reader to consider the following parts. In Acts, first in Acts chapter 1 verse 20, Peter quotes, if, let's look at Acts chapter 1 verse 20 so that you will also be carried along, not just the, you know, hearing. Acts chapter 1, verse 20. Acts 1, 20. It says, For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell during, and his bishopric, let another take. Let another take. You know, let another take. You know, Peter declared that it was the Holy Spirit that spake through the mouth of David. Right here. You know, that spake through the mouth of David. You see, um, when we look at Acts chapter 1 verse 16. Acts chapter 1, verse 16. It says, Men and brethren, this scripture must need have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was God to them that took Jesus. You see, to them that took Jesus, the mat this um, this passage thus does not represent David' personal vindictiveness. Secondly, we must understand also that it must be recognized that the Hebrew language is a very graphic medium of communication. It is rich in bold metaphors that design which is designed to display the passion of burning religious zeal. And one must be careful not to, not to literalize every expression. Also, thirdly, David was king of Israel, a rejection of the person who represented divine authority was thus a rejection of God himself. We can see that in 1 Samuel, chapter 8 verse 7 i'm not going to be reading all of the bible verses but i'll be reading some first samuel chapter 8 verse 27 it's it reads first samuel chapter 8 verse 7 i mean first samuel 8 7 it says and the lord said unto samuel akin unto the voice of the people in all that they say unto thee for they have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. I pray that the Lord will help us and give us the understanding of his word in Jesus' name. You see, um, this verse 22 to 23, let us read now. It says, let their table become a snare before them. And that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. A trap. That which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. Let their eyes be darkened, that they see not, and make their lions continually to shake. You see, though the enemy is comfortably reposed at his table in peace and security, 
the petition of David is that such may be turned into a snare or trap. Hence, punishment from God should be rendered unto his enemies. As for those who oppose God in their supposed illumination, let their eyes be darkened and may their lions continually shake. That means their back be bowed down perpetually. That their back should be bowed down perpetually. You see, the spirit of ungodliness, so characteristics of the king's foe, is so, you know, the spirit of, con uh, of ungodliness is the characteristics of this King David's foes. It's found its ultimate fulfillment in the rebellion of the Jewish nation towards David's illustrious seed. As indeed Paul, by inspiration, reveals to us in Romans chapter 11, verse 9. Romans chapter 11, verse 9. If you have your Bible, open your Bible along with me. Romans chapter 11, verse 9. You see, there he quotes. There he quotes. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stubborn block and a recompense unto them and a recompense unto them you see it is it is that you know the, that the punishment he wants god to apply to them it should be perpetual hardness perpetual hardness unto his enemy because this also it applies to the perpetual hardness of the nation of israel concerning and regarding jesus the messiah the king of kings and his divine penalty imposed in consequence thereof certainly in this verse that we have read there is no suggestion that after certain centuries have passed or after the gentiles are saved that god will commute the sentence and restore them i pray that the lord himself will vindicate us as well in jesus name now let us read verse 24 and 25 it says pour out thy indignation upon them and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them let their habitation be desolate and let none dwell in their tent you see right here the psalmist pray that every indignation might be poured out upon the persecutors upon those that persecute him that jehovah that god fears anger would overtake them he said all oh, that their habitation might be made desolate which means that their habitation their tent their tents should be emptied he really prayed for God to deliver him. He, he cried out to God for total deliverance. You see, this passage is also, we can see that Peter also quoted this passage in Acts chapter 1 verse 20. You see, when we look at the Old Testament, we can also see, you know, the relevance also, you know, in, in, in the New Testament in Acts chapter 1 verse 20 as chapter 1 verse 20 if you have your bible open your bible along with me please as chapter 1 verse 20 it says it says for it is written in the book of psalms let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell dwelling and his bishop break let none let another take and his bishop prick let another take remember we read that also as well when we look at it in correlation with the earlier verses that we read you see it's combined with a, a, a citation also from psalm 109 verse 8 psalm 109 verse 8 it says let his days be few let the days of those that are reproaching you 
you know, he prayed that God let my enemies, they let their days be few and let another take his office. Let another take his office. You see, this is as, this is as uh, applicable to the apostate Judas who fell from his apostolic office and was replaced by Matthias. You see, and that is the same thing that God is ready to do for you. Once you are able to trust him and you say, God, I'm crying out to you. I'm in distress. I'm pleading for deliverance. You see, and God, we, 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 we answer your prayers and we answer our prayers in Jesus name. Again, the claim frequently is made that the original text had no reference to Judas at the same time. That simply is not consistent with Peter's affirmation for he said, The Holy Spirit spake before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was guide to them that took Jesus. Remember we read Acts chapter 1 verse 16 earlier, or maybe in part 1. Um, Peter's and um, uh, Peter's employment or um, Peter's um, I admit, uh, ad, um, Peter's taking note of Psalm 69 verse 25 should place David implication in a proper light unto us. Moreover, Christ himself may well have had this verse in mind when in speaking of the coming doom of nation Israel, he said, Behold, your house is let unto you desolate. And you can see that in Matthew chapter 23, verse 38. Now, let us read verse 26 to 28. Um, it says, For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity unto their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living and not be written with the righteous. You see, the wicked of whom David speaks, as they were so crude, they were they aligned themselves to be desperately wicked unto David. They really aligned themselves to be desperately wicked unto him, you know, that they even had to his suffering. Of those they are to the suffering of those who labored under the chastening hand of the Lord. These persecutors they delighted in speaking about the plight of those that are going through affliction, of those who were afflicted. The evil ones they are so vile that the king prays that God will simply let them alone. As their iniquities multiplies, a trust that in their rebellion they will not be permitted to enter God's righteousness, where pardon, of course, is found. It would be injurious to the only cause of God if their sin were simply overlooked. In view, therefore, of their disposition to flout the will of the Creator. And to persecute the innocent, let their name be blotted out of the book of life. The meaning is that let them not be accounted among the righteous, you know, met out the punishment that they deserve. This was the cry of David to God. This was the cry of David to God. And we as well, we are being encouraged that we should allow god himself to take control of whoever is persecuting your life you know let god met out the judgment that they deserve that they deserve and i pray that the lord will come true for us in our time of distress as we plead for god in jesus i mean as we plead to god for mercy and for deliverance and total breakthrough in Jesus' name. Now, we will soon be rounding up. We are looking now at verse 29 to 36. Right here, we can see the hope of future, the hopeful future of Zion. The hope that dwells in the future 
of Zion. 26 to 36 says, verse 20, 29 I mean, verse 29 to 36 says, But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song and we magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and use. The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heavens and earth praise him, the sea and everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and will build the cities of Judah, that they may dwell there and have it in possession. The seed also of his servants shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell dwelling. You see, in the verse that's in the verses that we just read, we can see that David is open in the Lord, is trusting that the Lord will will bring hope back to Zion, is looking forward, looking at the future that and he know that with God all things are possible. So no matter the distress that he was going through, no matter the suffering that he was passing through in the hands of his enemies, is open in the Lord, is looking at the future that you will come and help Zion. You know, you, help will arise for me. Help will arise for us in Jesus' name. Amen. So now let us break it down also to verse 29 to 31. He says, but I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O Lord, set me up on high. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath on horns and wolves. We can see here that it is in contrast to his enemies who appear to be outwardly prosperous, but who will soon suffer disaster. David now is in misery, but anticipating deliverance. You know, he sang a song of praise to his God. The king thought, say, but I, you know, in contrast to his persecutors, who deserve punishment. He said, but I am poor and sorrowful. He is describing his physical and mental distress. Right here, that is poor, you know, physical, poor, sorrowful, mental distress, you know. And his petition, however, that God will send salvation. That's why he is what deliverance, that God will send salvation, you know, unto him. And so exalt him on high, bringing him out of his misery that he was going through. In consequence thereof, he would praise God with a song and magnify him with thanksgiving. You know, when his prayers have been answered, you know, his promise to magnify Jehovah is in the true spirit of evangelism. Others should know of our devout feelings for the God of heaven. David is very much confident that such devotion of praise and magnification would place God more than a mere animal's gift. You know, which he, we can see the reference, you know, to horns and wolves suggest so in a mature coin offering. It does not mean to minimize the requirements of the law, rather he is emphasizing the importance of of true heartfelt devotion that he wants us to also have it compared to even to the very best of sacrifices that we when the lord has done us good should also offer our sacrifices to the lord in thanksgiving in praise in honor glorifying the name of the lord now let us read verse 32 to 33 he says, the humble shall see this and be glad, and your, and your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor 
and despiseth not his prisoners. Let the heavens and earth praise him. You know, let the heavens and earth praise him. Verse 32 to 33. I let us stop at 33. For the Lord heared the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. You see, David now speak of the effect of his deliverance. Right here. Verse 32. The humble shall see. You see, when the Lord has delivered him, he's saying that the humble shall see it. See, the humble shall see this and they will be glad. And your heart shall live that seek God. For the Lord heareth the poor and despiseth not his prisoners. So whatever you are going through, hold on to the Lord. Okay? Even when you seek for friends, like we said in part one, and they despise you, and they even turn around against you, you know, uh, looking at you like a foreigner, like a stranger, like we talked about in part one of this message. Please, listen to that part one. You see, David here is saying that when the Lord now turns around to deliver him, when the Lord brings deliverance upon Zion, that they will see it. Others will see it and they will know that indeed God has indeed delivered him. You see, the meek, the meek shall not suffer. Those who are disposed to trust God and submit to his will have seen his exhortation from difficulty and they are glad. And so this exhortation is appropriate. All of you who seek after God, let your hearts live. You know, the meaning is take courage. Let your spirit be revived. God does, God does hear those who are in need. He hears our prayers. For those who are in need of one thing or the other, God hears our prayers. And he does not despise his prisoners. You know, this expression of prisoners, it denotes that those who are bound by affliction under the hands of providence and also those who suffer in confinement due to their fidelity to the truth of the word of God. So hold on to the Lord. Just don't deny him. You know, don't allow whatever you are going through to make you to begin to doubt God. He does answer prayers. Verse 34 to 36 now, as, we, as I read, it says, Let the heavens and earth praise him, even the seas, and everything that moveth therein. Verse 35. For God will save Zion and will build the city of Judah. They that okay, sorry, let me read it again. 34 to 36. It says, Let the heavens and earth praise him, the seas, and everything that moveth therein. For God will save Zion and we build the cities of Judah, and we build the city of Judah. That they may dwell there, that they may dwell, dwell, dwell there, and have it in possession. The seed also of a servant shall inherit it, and they that love his name shall dwell therein, and they that love his name shall dwell dwelling, and they that love the name of the Lord shall dwell dwelling. So we can see right here as David concludes his prayer in Psalm chapter 69. David calls for a universal heart of praise in tribute to Almighty God. The entire creation in heaven, on earth, and in the sea. You know that God is the entire creation in heaven, on earth, and in the sea. You can see that in, let us relate it real quick to Exodus chapter 20 verse 11. Exodus chapter 20 verse 11. I read, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. You see, is to honor the maker of all things. The reason for the song of praise is this. God will save Zion and build the cities of Judah. 
Zion is a symbol for the people of God. It's a symbol for the people of God. As we conclude, let us open our Bible to Hebrews chapter 22 verse 2. Hebrews chapter 22 verse 2. Hebrews 22 verse 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Hebrews 12 verse 22, I mean to say. Hebrews 12 22, it says, But ye are come unto Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable complaint of the angels. You see, Zion is a symbol of the people of God, of the people of God. And I pray, that God will help us in Jesus' name. Zion is also a place of God's habitation. Zion is also a place of God's habitation. It's also a place of God's habitation. Psalm chapter 9 verse 11. It says, Sing praises to the Lord, which dwell in Zion. You see, habitation. Declare among the people is doing. Sing praises unto the Lord, which dwells in Zion. Declare among the people is doing. So Zion can also be referred to as a place of God habitation. Zion can also be referred to as the center of Christ's reign. You can see that in Psalm chapter 2, verse 6. Psalm chapter 2, verse 6. It says, Yet have I set my king upon my only hill of Zion, a center of Christ's reign. Zion can also be referred to as the place of the Redeemer. You can refer to Zion as the place of the Redeemer. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 59 verse 20. Isaiah 59 verse 20 it says and the redeemer shall come to zion and unto them that turn from transgressions in david saith the lord it can also be referred to zion can also be referred to as the original point of the gospel the original point of the gospel we can see that in isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 and it reads and many people shall go and say come ye and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord to the house of the God of Jacob and he will teach us of his ways and we will walk in his path for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem and Zion can also be referred to as the object of God's love for us. And you can see that in Psalm chapter 87 verse 2. And it says, The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. And Zion can also be seen as the place of our salvation the place of our salvation let us read it from psalm chapter 14 verse 7 he says oh that the salvation of israel will come out of zion when the lord bringeth back the captivity of his people jacob shall rejoice and israel shall be glad amen you see the lord will thus save his people and no other the lord will save us in jesus name you see the building of the city of judah and the abiding there constitutes you know figuratively language expressing confidence our confidence should be in the blessing of the lord our and the blessing that god wants for us is our portion in jesus name so you know reason why i read those verses 
of Zion for you is that it expresses confidence in the blessing for. It expresses our security, you know, of the Lord. It also expresses those who are in the service of God. Today we have seen that the promise of God is given to generations, to us, to those who shall arise. You know, specifically also to those who love the name of God, that they that we might make it, and that we should make it the our aim to faithfully obey the will of the Lord, the will of the Lord. And I pray that the Lord will help us that we will do that which pleases the Lord in Jesus' name. This psalmist does have an application to the blessing enjoyed in the church of Jesus Christ. You know, it does have an application to the blessing one we enjoy in the church of Jesus Christ. I pray that we will be the doers of God's word and of everything that the Lord has destined for us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, we worship you, we give thanks for the message of today. We pray that the grace for us to be delivered, Father, we have hope in thee. We pray that you will set us free and that you will come to our rescue and give us a song of testimony that we too shall, be, shall share testimony and thanksgiving in your house in Jesus' name. Father, as we have called out to thee, out of our distress as we have plead for deliverance father please hear our prayers in jesus name have mercy upon us O lord and above all help us not to miss heaven in jesus name for anyone saying that they want to be saved father forgive their sins cleanse them with the blood of jesus write their names in the book of life and at the rapture sound make them rapturable in jesus name it is well with our spirit our soul and our bodies in Jesus' name. We are covered with the blood of Jesus, cut from the um, the wrath of the enemy, from the work of darkness in your mercy, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we use this medium to pray for the fatherless, the motherless, the orphans, the widow and the widowers, and all those that are looking up unto you for divine breakthrough. Father, please answer their prayers in Jesus' name. Save us, Lord. And let us to continually be the doers of your word. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, I do in thee, O Lord. Father, rescue us, O Lord. You said you will have mercy upon Zion. Have mercy upon us, Lord. In Jesus' name. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. Keep us, Lord, in the hours of temptation. And help us not to fall into the plan of the enemies. In Jesus' name. It is well with our spirit, soul, and body. We are covered with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are strongly believed and have prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. And the good Lord be with you. Stay blessed till another time when I come online. Remain blessed in the Lord. Thank you. God bless you. <music>